Welcome back to the Timco Retail Manager course. This course focuses on real world application development. In this video, we're going to be moving our login and logout options into the status bar instead of being full page views. So we'll convert our login page into a widget, remove the full page options, and use the authorized tag to identify what to show the user at any time. Now, for those of you who are new, my name is Tim Corey, and my goal is to make learning C Sharp easier. In this particular series, the way I do that is by showing you how real world application development gets done, where sometimes you jump in right in the middle, have to get up to speed and work on a new feature or a bug fix of an existing feature. Now, if you're a subscriber at on Patreon at the $5 per month level or higher, head on over there to get today's source code so you can get up to speed with where we're at. If you're not a subscriber yet, you can use the link in the description to go to Patreon, get signed up, and get the source code for today's video and most of the previous videos in the Timco series. I don't guarantee they'll be there, especially for previous phases, but you'll definitely have at least the current video's uh, source code. Now, I do offer on IamTimCorey.com the full phase one and phase two of this course, where you can buy those courses instead of watching it here on YouTube. The benefit there is you get downloadable videos, you get the source code attached to every video, and it's you have a certificate of completion at the end, along with some other benefits as well. This is phase three of the Timco Retail Manager, which is not yet a course. We're doing it live here on YouTube first, and then we will move it over once we've completed phase three. So let's jump right into Visual Studio and start writing some code. Now, just on the same page, let's go ahead and push start here to launch our application and see what it looks like in the browser. Just so we know what we're starting with and where we're moving to. So this is a Blazor application starting. We already have the API started. It started on my other screen. We'll leave it there. But this is the Blazor application, pretty simple. But we have our login page, which is a full page. We can fill out the information. We can verify the auth, which currently I'm not logged in. So I can log in here. And based upon this login, it's gonna go to the main page from here. And then I can verify my authentication and say that yes, I am authenticated and I have the admin role and the cashier role, but not the manager role. Okay, and log out just logs you out and then sends you right back to the home page, and we're not authenticated anymore. So we're going to move these two full pages up here, up where the about is right now in the upper right hand corner. We're going to put them up there so that we can uh, not have to have a full page for these, but just see either hello, Tim, I am Tim Corey, or say, hey, log in here with your username and password. So that's the goal. Let's get started with that goal by going over to our web app portal. And this is our Blazor web application. And in here, we're going to look at a couple of different pages. And the first page is actually in the shared folder called main layout. And as you'll see right here in this main layout, we have this right here, which is a top row. And in it, we have our about link. This is that about link in the top. It's a little bit of a gray row. And this is where we're gonna put our login and logout. We'll get rid of the about because we don't need to have the about there. If you wanna put something there later, we can, but for now we'll leave just our login information there. Either have the, the login uh, widget, which has the username and password and a submit button, or we're gonna have is the, if you're already logged in, it's gonna say, hey, uh, welcome and your your email address. So welcome Tim, I am Tim Corey. And then we'll have a log out button next or link next to it. So let's start with creating a way to show different things based upon if you're logged in or logged out. And that means we have to have an authorized view. Inside the authorized view, we have authorized. And we also have down here a section called not authorized. Makes sense, right? So not authorized, we're gonna show the login page. But for right now, we'll just say 
um, H2, uh, you need to log in. And then up here, what we'll say is uh, welcome. And then we're gonna grab the at context dot user dot find first claims type claim claim type sorry claim types my goodness name and then from there the value so what that'll do is give us in this case our email address since that's what we're using for our name for our login system so we'll have welcome and the email address. That's it for now. We're not gonna put the, the log out button yet. We're just gonna get this to work first. I would encourage when you're, with you when you're developing, try to get something small working and then test it and then add to it rather than trying to do all your work up front and then testing it at the end. Because if something doesn't work, then you wanna know right up front. So let's run this again, make sure that in fact it shows us, I think right now I'm not logged in, so I should say that I need to log in. All right, you need to log in, cool. Let's do that. And we'll hit login. And now welcome Tim, I am Tim Corey, which is in parentheses. So we can, we can take the parens off, I don't, I don't think we need those, but um, but now that's, we're welcoming me to the page. All right, so let's take those parens off. All right, so welcome and my email address. Cool. Now let's, I'm gonna shut these other things down off the screen. Now let's go and take this a step further, which is if you're not, if you are logged in, let's have a log out button or link. So we're gonna put a nav link. The class equals nav link and the href equals log out. So this is the, the path to that page to log out. Now we're gonna start this way using a nav link instead of the actual widget um, because the fact that the log out button or lit page, it doesn't really show anything. As soon as you go to it, it immediately logs you out. So we can't use it and just say, you know, um, here, I'll show you. We can't just say log out because that would be a problem. If you did that, it would show it right away and log you out right away. So instead we're going to create this nav link and in here, let's create a span and use our class equals we use our, our icon, so OI, OI dash account. We have login, log out, very convenient there. And then let's have a, uh, we'll end that span. We'll have the log out message. So that's our link for right now. We may come back and tweak this to make it even more clean. But for right now, that's our log out page. Let's try this again. So let's run this. And once this launches, we should see that logout button because we're still logged in as Tim, I am Tim Corey. We are. So we have this logout link now. So welcome Tim, I am Tim Corey and log out. We click that. The logout link goes away and it now says you need to log in. So we now have something functioning like we want it to but we don't have that log in yet. So let's get that next. In its simplest form, we can just do this, where we say log in. Now it's gonna say portal.pages.login. I don't want that. So I wanna take this right here, the portal.pages, I'm gonna cut it out. And I'm gonna go over to my imports.razor. I'm gonna add my using for portal.pages. And with that, we should be able to see our login page. Now we can actually self-close this. So we put a space and a slash there, and that is a self-closing tag. So that's gonna put the login page 
in this spot, which let's give that a shot. Now, I know it's not gonna work well, but it should in theory still at least work. So let's try it and see what happens. Then it kinda did. I mean, it's off a screen here and it says, I can barely see it, but I think that says email and down here it says password. But I can, if I want to try to log in. And sure enough, it logged in and now it looks cool, but the, the original experience is pretty horrible and not something you'd ever want to have on a web page. And it's probably gonna mess up with responsive as well. So what are we gonna do here? Well, let's close this out and figure something out to improve this login page. So we want to strip this down or we want to create a new page that's just the widget. It depends on how we want to do this. I think we want to strip it down and really make it just a widget. So we don't even go to the login page. And in fact, we'll take off that page directive that we can't even get to it by going to slash login. Now let's take off the show authentication error and the login. We can think about how to do authentication errors later, but for right now, let's strip it out. Now let's also work at stripping out everything in here that's gonna lay it out in that nice card format. So that means all of this must go. And the data annotation validation summary, those must go as well. Next, I'm going to rework this entire section. So let's actually create a new one and then we'll, we'll kind of backfill. So div, the class is going to be a, a form row. And then in here, we're going to have div class equals call auto. And this is based upon bootstrap. So if you're not familiar with bootstrap, you can um, go and look at the bootstrap documentation at get bootstrap.com It's great documentation. Uh, we're currently using bootstrap four. So make sure you change the documentation from five to four. But, um, the basics here are that I want to have a horizontal form, not a vertical one. So I put everything inside of one row instead of having one row per, uh, per field. So we have a stacked right now in a vertical form. We're going to change that to a horizontal form and have just one row. So each will be a column. So in here, I'm going to say, let's move this label up. Move that up right there. But we're going to change this to have only one class. It's going to say SR only, which stands for screen readers only. And we'll take the colon off here. So what this is going to do is not show the label at all unless you're using a screen reader, which is an accessibility thing. And so this way for screen readers, they won't just say, you know, text box or something like that. They'll say email text box, and then you can know what that is. So we're gonna create that label and then we'll create our, our input. So let's grab our input and we'll paste this in afterwards. And the only thing we need to do here is since we're not showing this label, except for screen readers, what we're going to do is say placeholder equals email address. And what that'll do is it's going to put email address inside a text box and kind of like a, a light gray. So you can see it and know what that text box is for, but you don't have to have a separate label for that text box. So that saves us a lot of space on our bar. So let's do this again. So we're going to create another column. So div class equals call auto. And in here we're going to have our label. We've already got the email done, so we can get rid of this. So it's going to be our password. So let's grab our password. And again, we're going to take out everything and replace it with SR only. And I'll take the colon off at the end. And then we'll grab our input text and put it afterwards. And we're going to add to this our placeholder. Placeholder equals, and this is going to be password. Now you notice IntelliSense didn't find placeholder. That's because the input text doesn't have an element for placeholder. 
However, if it has an attribute it can't find, like placeholder, what it's gonna do is when it converts this over to a password text box, it's going to add the attribute placeholder. Because it goes, I don't know what that, that attribute's for, therefore it must be for the input. And I'll put it on that instead. So it kind of, it drops down into the eventual control it's going to be. So that's a nice uh, feature, but it does mean that our um, IntelliSense does not work when it comes to standard input items. All right, we can get rid of that. And we have one more column. So div class equals call auto. And inside here, we need to have one thing, which is our button. So let's grab that and we're gonna paste that in here. So now we have our button and our button pretty much stays the same. We've got the, it's a type of submit. We've got the BTN success and it says log in. Cool, we're all done. We can get rid of this button text. So we've really stripped down now this form into a much smaller version of itself. We have just an inline form, meaning it's gonna be horizontal. It's gonna have no labels, just the text boxes and the button. It's gonna say, you know, email address and password and log in, and that'll be it. So in theory, this should work. Let's see how it actually plays out when we launch the web application. So if you got this right, it's gonna look pretty good. And if we didn't, we're gonna fix it. So there we go. Now we have inline, because we're not logged in, we're not logged in. We have inline the uh, email address. Notice the, it says password here until I start typing something. We hit log in. And once we log in, it says, welcome Tim, I am Tim Corey. And we have the log out button. So we can go back and forth between these two and have a good experience that the user understands. And we still have a little bit of cleanup work to do. We're gonna get rid of the login, logout here. There's no reason to go to that full page, which no longer exists. The logout page does work, but we don't need to go there either. So we need to clean up those two things, but we also have a bit of an issue with formatting. So when you're developing, don't forget about the fact that not everybody has the same resolution as you do. For example, if we're working on a tablet, it'll look different than if you're working on a phone versus a desktop. And not all desktops are gonna be the same size. In fact, I may snap this to half my browser and it becomes now half of my 1920 by 1080 screen. So let's shrink this down manually and see the different breakpoints that Bootstrap makes some adjustments, all right? So let's scroll down or shrink it down. And it looks good so far, looks good, looks good. Ah, that doesn't look so good. So we have a break point right about here that is a problem. That makes our, our form look messy, but let's keep going. And it makes it even messier now because now it's stacked and it's not really visible. It still work, but it's super ugly. We can scroll down even more and now it looks fine, except for the fact that, how are you gonna log in or log out? If you click the hamburger menu, there's no way to log in or log out. Obviously you can use these links, they're still here, but once they're gone, what do we do? So what we're gonna need to do, and I think what we'll do is we'll spend a whole lesson on formatting. So I think I'm gonna hold off and leave this kind of visual bug in here for now. But I wanna do a whole lesson on how do you mess with CSS? How do you mess with breakpoints? How do you display things in different places in different ways? So I'm gonna hold off on actually fixing it so we have some more of these visual bugs to address, but that's what I'm gonna think through. Now there is, just so you know, if you use the browser tools, hit F12 in Chrome or in uh, the new Edge, and I think it might be the same in Firefox, I'm not sure. But if you notice, there's this little button, let's kind of zoom in here, there's this, toggle device toolbar in Chrome tools or Chromium tools, so even Edge will have this, where you click it and it's going to allow you to see, and I'll move this off a screen, it's gonna allow you to see your app in different resolutions for different devices. So we're gonna have responsive, but I can say, what does it look like on iPad Pro? Well, that's what it looks like on an iPad Pro vertical 
We can flip that to horizontal, there you go. And now I can say, well, what's an iPad? There we go, there that iPad looks kind of ugly because of the fact we have that login button stacked. Now you rotate it sideways and there we go, it looks better again. So this will allow you to see, you know, an iPhone X and go, okay, that's, that's kind of not great, that's even worse. Um, and figure out what's gonna look like on different devices without having to manually do these, um, these shrinking and growing. Now you can say just responsive and you can change it yourself. So you can say, hey, I wanna make it uh, you know, 1200 by uh, 922 right now. And notice that the 100% here, this just says if I put an incredibly large number in here, let's do uh, 4,000, that's larger than my screen can show. And so what it did is it shrunk it down to 47% so I can see the whole thing on my screen as if it were 4,000 pixels wide. So this note, that's that percentage is four. You could um, adjust it manually, because, but then you have problems when it comes to seeing it on your whole screen unless it's smaller than your screen. So this is where you can start dialing in those different breakpoints and seeing you know, where the actual breakpoint is and, um, and you know, finding out what the issues are. And we'll, I'll talk more about those breakpoints, where to find them, how to adjust them, or how to work with them in order to um, get the most out of your app design. But this tool here can at least let you see what common devices are probably gonna show in full screen. And then from there, you can just turn this off again, just click this little button again and see the full screen. And then you can do it manually as well if you want in order to see the different layouts. Another feature here is that right now, I don't know what the size is, but if I hit F12, which it opened my um, dev tools in another window, yours may be snapped. So yours may be at the bottom of the screen or the side of the screen. If you click this dock side here on the ellipsis, so let's zoom in here, this ellipsis here, there's dock side. Mine is currently at two popped out or in a separate window. The benefit there is that it doesn't affect my size of my web application. I can make it full screen and see the full screen view. So that can be beneficial, but you can have it docked to other places, docked to the bottom, to the side, and so on. So if you're gonna dock it somewhere, um, it's convenient to put on the right, but at the same time, it makes your app smaller. So I typically put it on the bottom. But if you have a second screen or don't mind moving around, have it on top and behind, then popping it out is probably the best option. So I leave it popped out. I'll move to the other screen. And here we're going to start re resizing again. And notice right away, let's see if I can, I can pause this. There we go. Right there. It says 1151 pixels by 932 pixels. So that tells me the, the width and the height of my app, my window right now. So when you are resizing and you find a breakpoint that doesn't look right, so you say, okay, once it gets below, we can find that exact pixel here. Let's, oh, so it looks like 38. So 838 pixels wide. That's where we have a problem. 839 and beyond is fine. So you can create either a CSS media query if you want, or what you can do is you can use the built-in media query um, system within Bootstrap. Ideally, you use the Bootstrap built-in media queries because it just makes your life easier and standardized, but it's up to you. So, but that little trick right there will help you find those breakpoints and go, okay, you know, the next one is, and you say, okay, I think it's probably 58, 757 or 758, somewhere around there is where we have a problem, 757, um, where we have a problem where it stacks those two on top of each other. So you can figure out a lot of information using the developer tools and from there make informed decisions on how to set up your uh, CSS in order to get this right so it doesn't look like this. So just wanna point that out that yes, that's ugly. And if you do it on your own, um, that yes, it's gonna be a problem. And you may say, oh, Tim forgot that. Tim didn't forget that, but I do wanna hold off on doing this until we can do a whole lesson on doing this in a, number, in a few different places at least, 
so that um, you can see many different ways of approaching this problem. All right, now let's clean up these two at least, and then we will call this wrapped. So go to Solution Explorer, and under Shared, we have the Nav menu. The Nav menu is where we have that navigation. We can go ahead and clean up these two, log in and log out, get rid of those. Let me run it again, and it should be that we see our completed nav menu being a lot more sparse, just having two options, and that is home and the verify auth, and it does. It has two options, home and verify auth, we're not authenticated, we still can log in. I got the password right. Yep, I did. So we're logged in now. We can see that um, it knows who we are. We can log out. So it all works. And now it's a lot cleaner of a login and log out system. We just have those visual uh, bugs to take care of. So that's it for this lesson. I wanted to, to cover the login logout move. We'll probably get into next the concept of creating an account. So you can use this web portal to create new accounts in our system. So we'll probably tackle that in our next lesson. Until then, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.